Okay, so hi guys. Uh, today I wanted to show you how to thread an industrial sewing machine. So this is a lock stitch machine, very similar to what you have at home, except this is an industrial version. Um, what makes it industrial is the speed at which it moves um, and the strength. So pretty much anything can go through this machine, uh, leathers, vinyls, uh, multiple thicknesses, denim, um, if some adjustments are needed, but this is a very strong, very fast machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of step on the pedal so you can hear the speed at which it goes when it's full speed. So. So it can go very, very, very quickly. Um, in the industry, you do want a machine that moves quicker um, because the more you make, the more money you're making. And so it's all for production. Um, these machines um, in this room, so you can kind of look around and see that there are quite a few industrial jukies in this classroom. Um, some of them have the ability to slow down. So that's kind of a nice thing. When you get to campus and start working on these machines, there's a little knob down here. Um, a little speed lever, which is really nice. Um, not all the machines have it, but it's handy to slow the machine down. If you don't want to go full speed ahead, you don't have to. So something like that would be a nice speed to kind of work at as a beginner. Okay, so again, industrial machine, so it's a little bit different than your home sewing machine. We call these an outer tension machine, meaning that nothing is happening on the inside of the machine. Um, that's really working with the tension other than a couple of key components like the take-up lever, which um, again, if you go through all of the names and terminology of the parts, um, those will ring a bell. So I am gonna use terms right now when I start threading the machine because hopefully you already went through and read through all the parts um, and what they do, um, what their purpose is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the spool thread. So with a lock stitch machine, what happens is it has two different threads. There's a thread that's on top of the machine. We call that the upper or the spool thread. And then there's a thread that goes below the machine. Um, you'll find some nice videos and illustrations um, in the module that kind of show how a sewing machine works. Again, this machine is made um, to make a lock stitch. Um, what that means is it's a really tight, really strong connection um, of the two threads, how they interlace. And that's why we use it for apparel. Um, you want to keep your clothes on and really this little thread is what does that so to do that we're going to start with the spool thread um, these are the spool pins so you'll see that there are two spool pins on this machine uh, the reason for that is because you could wind a bobbin which we'll talk about in a second or you could even put two threads to one needle um, and that's called twin needle um, sewing and so again if you go through um, the module you'll see that reference on the twin needles um, but for now we're going to use just one of the spool pins and we're going to use the left spool pin the reason why we're using the left one is because it's closer to the needle and essentially what we're trying to do is we're just trying to get the thread through the eye of the needle as easily and smooth as possible so we're going to start on the left spool pin and the first place that we need to thread is through the eye on this arm here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the back and I'm going to work my way forward. The reason why I do that is because right now I'm behind the needle. So I want to work forwards towards the needle. Okay, so that's my first thread guide and it's a little hole. I have a second thread guide that now I'm going to start. I'm going to go ahead and sit down now. My next thread guide is right here on this little pin that sits above the machine. Again, I'm behind the needle right now, so I'm going to go ahead and thread through the thread guide and I'm going to come forward because again, I'm working towards my needle. Now what I'm going to do, you'll see here that there's this little circle, this little wheel of metal. This is called a tension wheel and you can see that there's a spring on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap around the tension wheel from right to left because again, I'm on the right side of the needle right now and I wanna work my way towards the needle down below. So again, it's a very easy, kind of a backward C shape. You're not wrapping it, you're not looping it. It's just a simple over right to left. Okay, then I'm gonna to work towards another set of thread guides here on this metal bar. Again, I'm on the right side of the needle, so I'm gonna come in right to left through the thread guide. And I'm gonna bring my thread around and I'm gonna work right to left again. 
So what this produces is this produces from where I'm sitting, it creates an S shape with the thread. So if I come from the front of the machine and I look at the thread here, I can see that there's an S shape occurring. So once you guys get into the classroom and you start working on these machines, one of the first things that I do is I come and I check and I make sure that you've threaded from right to left and then from right to left again, and it creates a S shape in the thread. Let me go ahead and remove the thread and I'll do it again for you. So I'm gonna go right to left and then again, right to left again. And then you'll see that it creates an S shape, not a C, not a Z, not a backward C, but an S shape. This is one that most people um, confuse. So that's something that I will always check on. Okay, now what you'll see is that the thread naturally just kind of wants to go straight down now. So if you go ahead and just kind of let the thread do what it wants to do, it wants to automatically go through these tension discs here. So similar to the disc that's on top, this tension disc is made up of two metal wheels with a spring in front. And you'll also see that there's this tension knob too. So if you move this around, this will adjust the tension of the upper or spool thread. Don't adjust this really. Um, the machines here in this classroom are already set. At home, you probably have a presetting on your tension. Um, if you're having any tension issues, we'll go into that a little bit more um, in the class, and that's something that you may want to email me about um, and ask um, specifically about your machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let my thread do what it wants. It wants to go between these two metal discs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna create a U shape. So I'm just gonna wrap around the disc. I'm just gonna go up. Okay, I'm not gonna loop or anything, but I'm making a U shape. And what I like to do is I like to bring my hand from right to left so that it can grab this little black hook here. That's my first hook that I'm gonna grab. After that, after I see that I can move it, I'm gonna go ahead and loop under this silver hook. And that's my second hook. Then I'm gonna move up towards the take up lever and I'm going to thread behind this third and final hook on the right side. Okay, sorry for the wobbly camera. Now that I've worked through one, two, and three, I'm now gonna move up towards the take up lever. Now the take up lever is behind this metal bar, so it's a little bit confusing because it's somewhat hidden. So if you kind of come to the side, you can see this weird little piece of metal that's sticking out of the machine. All machines that are lock stitch machines have a take up lever. It just might look a little bit different than this one. One thing that's really, really, really important is that you want to make sure at home, here in class, wherever you are, you want to make sure that your take up lever is always in the right position. Right now, it's right smack dab kind of in the middle of that bar. That is in a random area. You want to make sure that you're taking it to the most upright position. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take your right hand, you're going to place it on the hand wheel and you're going to rotate the hand wheel towards yourself okay so rotating towards you until the take up lever moves all the way to the top 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 so again i'm rotating towards myself only and i want to get it to the most upright position that's the neutral position right there that's kind of where you want to leave your take up lever at all times so again you want to make sure that you're rotating the hand wheel always towards you and you're watching the take up lever to make sure that it rotates all the way back to the top. Okay, now that the take up lever is in the upright position, I'm gonna go ahead and take my thread and I'm gonna thread through the take up lever from right to left because I'm still on the right side of the machine. So if I can get that through there, there we go. Okay, now I'm on the left side of the machine. Now I'm working, you know, the opposite direction. So what you'll see here on the left side is you'll see another hook. I need to go ahead and put my thread through that hook as well. Once you're through that left hook, now you're working down towards the needle area, okay? And so what you'll see here is you'll see that there's the actual machine needle back here. You'll see this funny shaped little metal bar um, and this is connected to what we call the presser foot. So again, that should sound familiar. This is called the slide plate. So we talked about the slide plate, or you saw that in the module. And this is called the stitch plate. So you'll see kind of random measurements on here. 
Now that I'm working my way down here, it means that I'm almost done threading the machine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna thread behind this dark hook up here above the needle. This hook's purpose is really just to align the thread. It swivels, it kind of moves around with you. And it's really just there to align the thread so it goes straight down to your needle. Now you may be able to see a little hole right here above the machine. That little hole is another thread guide. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna thread through that little hole. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread through the needle. Now, the easiest way to do this on these machines is to drop your presser foot. There's a lever behind the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the foot so that I have uh, more of the needle exposed because I do have this bar here, which tends to get in the way. Another thing you may want to do, right now with the take-up lever in the upright position, my needle is kind of in the neutral area, which is very close to this metal bar. If that makes it difficult for you to thread, I like to, again, put my hand on the hand wheel, and I like to just kind of watch the needle and not the take-up lever, and I take the needle to the highest position that it will go. I'm gonna move the light a little bit. You guys can see that. So now my needle's a little bit higher than it was before. And if I keep rotating towards myself, it gets even a little bit higher than that. Right now the take-up lever is not in the correct position. Right now the take-up lever is very low and kind of in an awkward place. But this position is really helpful for me to thread through the eye of the needle. Now, the reason why I have to move the needle to get it into an easier, easier place is because the hole is not on the front of the needle, which is pretty normal for a home sewing machine. So if I look here and I go into the you know, needle, there's no hole in front. The reason for that is because the hole is actually on the side of this needle. And it's just the way that these machines hold the needle. It's really important that you um, realize the way that the needle is sitting. There's a shaft on the back of this needle and it is what creates the lock stitch. So it's a little hard to see, but there's a little divot on the side of the needle here. And you need to make sure that when you change out the needle that you're able to see that. Um, if you don't, then uh, it's actually not gonna create the stitch correctly and it'll just continue to come unthreaded. So again, these ones are a little bit strange because the needle hole is on the side. And the way that we're gonna thread this is we're gonna thread the needle left to right. So again, we were on the left side of the machine, so we're gonna work left to right. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna thread this needle eye left to right. Um, if you go to start threading your needles and it's a little bit difficult, kind of having a hard time getting in there, you might wanna just clip the thread, that way it's a little easier to um, get through so it's not frayed. And I got a little loop on it, but that's okay. Just kind of looped it. Okay, left to right. So what you should be able to do is you should be able to take your hand and you should be able to, I'm just gonna take my take up lever back to neutral now that I'm done. You should be able to pull on the thread and it shouldn't snap, it shouldn't break. It shouldn't be super loose so that it just like kind of falls out. But you can see, I'm putting a little bit of tension on it. It's a little tight, I have to kind of put a little effort into it, but it's not snapping the thread and it's not getting all knotted up. So that means that it's perfectly threaded. So if we kind of look, take a like far glance from the machine, there is a, there's quite a bit that goes on. You know, your spool pin starts pretty far, you know, behind the machine. It works its way up the arm, down to the first thread guide, right to left over the first tension discs, through these next set of thread guides, down under this tension disc that works with the spool thread. We have three separate hooks that work here to create the tension. We thread through the eye of the take-up lever. We then move to the left side of the machine to go behind this hook towards the needle with this darker hook. We then have an eye on the machine to line up the thread, and then we thread through the machine left to right. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Um, so it's about 16 steps, and I mean, it is a little bit more difficult than a home sewing machine, um, but once you get it, you know, right a couple of times, it becomes very, very easy, kind of just able to memorize that. So now that that is threaded, now I need to work with this bottom portion of the machine, and I need to thread what's called my bobbin and my bobbin case. 
So like I said before, lock stitch machines work with a thread on top of the machine and a thread on the bottom. This little tiny metal circle here is called a bobbin. And a bobbin is essentially just a little miniature spool of thread. They come empty when you get them, you know, when you buy them, they come naked, no thread on them. You need to put thread on it depending on what you're making. So if I was making, let's say, a white dress, I would want to put white thread on this. If I was making blue jeans, I'd want to put blue thread on it. So you change the thread according to what you're making. And there's a bobbin winding mechanism on this machine that I'll show you in another video. Um, and that gets the thread wrapped around this bobbin nice and smooth. Okay, you don't want to do it by hand. You definitely want to use the bobbin winder. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my bobbin by placing it into my bobbin case. I like to think about sewing kind of like a puzzle. There's a bunch of the pieces that go together, and when it comes to the sewing machine, the sewing machine is definitely like a puzzle. Um, and these are the jigsaw pieces. So what I'm going to do is I like to take the bobbin, and I like to make sure I have thread on it. So I use my bobbin winder, and I get some thread on it. And I make sure that the thread is going a certain direction. I hold the bobbin in my right hand and I make sure that the thread is going over and away from me. I know that might seem kind of strange. So you don't want it facing you. You want to make sure that as you take the thread over, it goes away from you. That's the opposite of if the thread were coming over and towards you. So that's incorrect. The thread goes over and away from you. And this is pretty standard for most sewing machines if it contains a bobbin and a case. Make sure that you go to your owner's manual if you're not sure. But for the most part, the bobbin usually works with it going over and away. Same with the hand wheel. For you guys with hand wheels at home, you always wanna make sure that you're rotating that you know, hand wheel towards you, never away. The reason for that is because they all contain belts. And if you're running your you know, hand wheel the wrong direction, you're gonna break that belt and then your machine's out of luck. So over and away, keep the bobbin in the right hand. You're gonna take your bobbin case in the left hand and you probably have some type of an opening on your bobbin case. Mine has a pretty giant hole. Yours might not be that big. Maybe yours is a little like small hole or small slit. Um, but you're gonna look for an opening in the bobbin case. That opening has to face up. The reason for that is because this bobbin case sits below the machine and doesn't move. The bobbin itself is going to unwrap thread as you sew. And so the thread needs an exit hole. And the needle needs a place where it can go. I'm going to use my little clipping scissors here. But the needle needs a place where it can go in and out of the bobbin and case and not hit metal. So if while you're threading the bobbin and case, if you don't have that hole facing up, Let's say, oh, I don't know, you put it under the machine like this with the metal facing up. Your needle's gonna go down and you're gonna break your, you're gonna dent your case and you're gonna break a needle. So you really have to make sure that when you're preparing your bobbin and case that the hole goes up and that the thread goes over and away from you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide the bobbin into the case and there's always going to be a little slit or a little opening where the thread can get pulled into the bobbin case and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw my thread so that it eventually comes out of this little hole here so I'm going to pull and you kind of hear a little flossing sound once you hear that little flossing sound you know that your thread has gone through this little um, corridor and is now coming out of the hole that it needs to and to check I like to let go of my bobbin case and bobbin and if my thread is able to hold in there tight and not my bobbin doesn't go flying or my bobbin case doesn't go flying out of my hands, then I know I've threaded it correctly. So that's usually my check. I usually let go, make sure that it's able to hold it, not fly away. I'll give you, I'll show you an example of doing it wrong. So I still have my thread over and away. I still have my hole facing up. But let's say I put the thread through that little slit and I think that I'm good. And if I let go, it's gonna fly away. So. It's not done until you hear that little flossing sound. And then again, you can let go of it and it will hover. Okay, now it's ready to go. It's nice and tight, the tension's great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my slide plate here. So I'm just gonna pull to the left, I'm gonna pop that open. This now gives me access to underneath the sewing machine here, okay? Underneath the sewing machine, and it's really hard to see, uh, underneath the machine, there is a little compartment here to hold the bobbin in case. So you can kind of see it in here. There's a little pin in there. It looks like the spool pin. And it's a bobbin pin, so it's made to hold the bobbin in the case. And so that's exactly where I want to place this 
combo here, the bobbin and the case together. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna hold the bobbin with the, uh, the bobbin case, I'm sorry, with the hole facing up, and I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna place it underneath the sewing machine so that now, again, I'm working in this little compartment down here. This is called the bobbin compartment. I'm gonna now take the little hole in the middle of the bobbin and case, and I'm gonna place it on that little pin there. Now my take up lever's at the top, my machine is threaded beautifully, my bobbin and case are prepared and ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slide that onto that pin, and I'm gonna push it in until I hear a click. I hear that click and that means that it is in the machine. I always suggest doing it that way so that you hear that click, that way you know it's in. If you go ahead and put your bobbin and case down here and you don't hear that click, what that means is that as you start to sew, the bobbin and case are not pushed in all the way, and so the bobbin itself is gonna have the ability to start to roll around. And remember, it's supposed to stay still. There's a hole there for the needle. If it starts to swivel and that needle comes down, you're going to break a needle and you don't want a needle in the eye. And then you're going to dent your bobbin case and that could be, you know, garbage now. And these things are pretty expensive. So you don't want to have to buy another $35 um, bobbin case. So again, I'm going to go ahead and hold it with the hole facing up, put it on the pin, push it in until I hear the little snap there. Now you'll notice that the thread's kind of coming out the bottom of the machine here. In order to sew, I need to get this thread to the top of the machine. And to do that, I need to work with my spool thread up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift my presser foot, with the lever that's behind the machine, and I'm gonna take this spool thread, so the purple thread, and I'm gonna hold it in my left hand. And so I'm gonna hold it in my left hand and I'm gonna hold it on the left side of the machine I'm not gonna move my left hand, and I'm gonna make sure that I give myself a little bit of slack on the thread here. That little bit of slack will allow my needle to pick up my bobbin thread. So again, hand, left hand on the left side, don't move this hand. Give yourself a little bit of slack, don't hold it really tight. Give a little bit of a U shape there. And I'm gonna take my right hand and place it on the hand wheel, and I'm gonna do one full rotation. Again, I'm always gonna rotate towards myself, and I'm going to watch my take-up lever. So there's a lot going on here. I'm watching my hand, I'm watching my take-up lever, I'm making sure that I'm hand wheeling towards myself. And I'm gonna rotate my hand wheel, watching my take-up lever go all the way down and all the way back up again. And now it's back at the top. Now that whole time I wasn't looking at my needle, I was looking at the take-up lever. So you might, it might seem counterintuitive that you're looking here, not there. But I'm looking at the take-up lever because I want to make sure it goes back to the upright position. Now, if I look down at my hand, I didn't really look, I didn't move my left hand. I wasn't looking at what was going on down here. But I could kind of feel that the thread was being pulled. Now, if I do a little tug on the machine, you kind of see what's popping up from the bottom there? Oh, there's my white bobbin thread. So the machine did all the work for me, and it drew that bobbin thread to the surface for me. So now you'll see there's a little thread coming out of that hole. That little tiny hole is where the needle's gonna go down. And that thread is now going to interlock with my spool thread, and that's how I'm gonna make a nice, tight, great stitch. Once you have both of these threads, I like to push them towards the back of the machine, and I like to just do a little pull. I just like to pull on them to make sure it's not too loose, not too tight. If maybe when you do this, it snaps, something's threaded incorrectly. And I suggest unthreading everything and doing it again. You wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth and a really fluid you know, motion with that thread. Now I can close my slide plate. I like to take my threads, I push them to the back of the machine and I'm ready to sew. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a scrap of muslin real quickly and I'm just gonna do one little stitch the way you can kind of see what it looks like and how the machine, yeah, um, how the stitch should look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and use this little lever on the back of the machine here. Again, if you go to the module, you'll see that there's a lever that's always on the back and that controls the presser foot. Remember the presser foot is this weird little uh, mechanism here. It looks like a little shoe or a boot. And that's why they call it a foot. And its purpose is to push weight on the machine weight on the fabric, and it works simultaneously with these little serrated little teeth here. This is called a feed dog, and it forces the fabric towards the back of the machine.
And so that's how the machine works. Again, there's more information about that in the module, and there's some nice videos on how the presser foot and the feed dial work together. So again, I'm going to go ahead and put lift up the foot so that I can get the fabric underneath the presser foot, and I'm going to put the lever down so that now I have weight on the fabric, and my feed dogs can kind of work to push the fabric towards the back of the machine. And when I start sewing, I'm always going to hold the threads down. I just got them threaded. I'm going to hold them down because I don't want the machine to suck it through and cause a jam, and then I have to re-thread the whole thing. So I'm going to hold the weight of the thread here. I'm going to put my foot on the foot pedal that's on the floor. So you have a foot pedal down here. Um, it really just depends on how you really want to work it. I like to put my foot a little bit higher up on the pedal to get a little bit more control. And then I'm going to slowly start to sew. And so, slowly. Sorry, my machine's kind of slowed down, so. A nice, you know, speed on your stitch. I'm just going to let this little thread go below the foot. Once you start making a couple stitches, you can feel free to let go of the threads. You don't have to hold on to them for more than a second. You just want to be able to catch the um, first couple of stitches, and then you can go sew. I have a hand at the back of the machine and a hand in the front, and I'm really just kind of trying to guide the, the, the stitch, just guiding the machine. I'm just going to make a little curve here. I'm going to go ahead and pivot down, which means I'm going to hand wheel so that my needle lands in the fabric. I'm going to use my lever to lift up the pressure foot. I'm going to move a different direction just so I can kind of show you guys. This is a kind of different direction of stitching. And that was called a pivot. Okay. And that's it. You do um, have the ability to back stitch, but we'll go over that in another demo. I just wanted to show you one good stitch. Now, now that I'm done stitching, what you'll notice is that my take-up lever, sorry, my take-up lever is really low in a weird position. I want to make sure that I now put my right hand on the hand wheel and I rotate that take-up lever back to the top before I put my right hand behind the machine, lift up, the presser foot lever, and now I have the ability to pull really smoothly my fabric away from the machine. So now what you'll see is you'll see that I have this really nice, really um, well-tensioned stitch. It looks nice on the top, and if I flip it over, it looks just as good on the back. Um, there's no real big loops or any kind of you know jams that are occurring, and that's what you want your stitch to look like. If after you thread your home sewing machine, it does not look like this, um, definitely you'll want to contact me and so then we can kind of sit together and we can troubleshoot that. Okay, so hopefully this intrigues you to um, take another class so that you can be on campus. And we'll go through some more videos now on winding a bobbin and surging.